the lovely Alexis has this pendant, which of course you can't really see most of it because we've covered it all with tape, but it has this gorgeous moonstone, pear-shaped, which is something that causes trouble for a lot of people. Anything with corners can be sort of problematic when you set. So um, if you want to tune out after the next 10 seconds, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know, which is you have to do the corners first. That's the whole secret. I'm going to show you how to do it. We're going to do it, but that's the key. If you set the other parts first, and then you move to the corners, you end up with extra space there, which becomes weirdly almost impossible to get rid of. So the secret to these bezels, eat your lima beans first, do the corners and your setting, you know, it'll all go way, way better. So now we're gonna actually do that. Another thing I wanna point out, uh, this is a lovely moonstone. So Alexis had the choice, you can either put, we use uh, electrical tape behind it, believe it or not, the black, uh, that brings out the blue. She went with the silver because you get more of a, um, oh God, what's the right word? Hello? Silvery. You really just make that choice for yourself. In other words, like usually what I do when I'm going to set something like this, I put it up against something black, I put it up against something nice and shiny, and then just see like what looks better. Because there's no real right answer. It's just what looks good to you. So we're going to work on the point and so normally I would take my bezel roller, but instead I'm gonna show you uh, tool number four, the straight setter. Now there are three of these in three different sizes, basically going from about three and a half millimeters down to one and a half millimeters. And what straight setters are for, they're really just like a little tiny bezel roller. These are for when you do not have room. You know, a bezel roller, when you've got all the room in the world to move around, this is fantastic. When you've got bezels close together, when you've got bezels close to a bale, you know what I mean? There are just times where like, you, you, there's no way you're gonna get in there with that. That's when you go to the straight setters. Now I'm using the largest, which as you can see is not very large, just about three and a half millimeters wide. Uh, it's an oval shape. We're going to be, I'll try to move it slowly. Yeah, sorry, we're, to we're gonna be working right in the middle, the same way that you do when you're using a bezel roller. But having the, this oval shape means you don't have any metal sticking out beyond to like, you know, bang into other things. So this just helps you to get into tight spaces. Okay, so the point, as always, I'm gonna be holding the stone down with my left hand because you know, before it's set, you press too hard, it can boop. And as we discussed before, get that elbow up in the air. If your elbow isn't nice and high, I guarantee you're not getting that 45 degree angle that's so important, okay? So if it's down here, I can pretty much guarantee you don't have the right angle. So, What I'm going to do is I'm gonna start pushing just a hair to the right of the point and push the extra space away. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here on the left. You're really just trying to move any of that extra space and get it away, you know, drive it to the rest of the bezel where it can easily be dealt with. Okay, so I'm gonna take this. I've got my thumb resting nice and secure tools in the palm of my hand with my thumb and my forefinger, you know, kind of just right there guiding it. Okay, so I press in and I just roll it a little bit to the side. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And I'm basically just gonna go back and forth on that peak until it's completely closed before we go to the rest of the piece. Okay. Press in and roll it out. Okay, so I'm gonna work on that a little bit more, but you can see already, I've gotten the majority of that extra space out of the peak. Okay. So to me, I kind of visualize it like I'm sweeping that extra space away. You know what I mean? Get it, get it out, <laughs> get it away from the point. And your settings will start to go a whole lot better. Okay. 
Now, when I move around to these larger areas where I have tons of space, maybe I'll switch over to my bezel roller. I mean, you can still use this, but I, I really do usually just use it for tight spots. Okay, press in and then sort of roll that space out. Okay, so like take a look and you see how now I have no more open space at the peak. I mean, it's not like completely smooth and finished, but there's no extra space. So now I can just start moving it even further away. I'm going to continue moving away from the peak to the rest of it. So maybe I'll use this now. Let's see. Oh, I'll use this for a little bit more. Press in, don't slide. Press in. And you see how I just roll that out a little bit? And just remember, keep that elbow up. That jump ring is right in my <laughs> way. But that's all right. That's what happens. Press in. Okay, just like that. Mm -hmm. All right, so what I want you to do now is I'm gonna have you just continue to work this around and it's still gonna be sort of more or less normal setting, holding your tool at a 45 degree angle and pressing it up against the stone. But basically by doing the point first, you've guaranteed that you're not gonna have really any major issues when you finish it up. Okay, so important things. <laughs> so now that the tip is, it's not perfect and smooth, but it's, it's like filled in, you know, there's no extra space there. So we're going to work our way around the rest of it. And Alexis and I were just discussing and she's saying, well, where should I go next? Should I go to the bottom? Should I go here? And I said, you know, honestly, the, the points are the most important, but if you've got extra space on the sides, like side to side, go ahead, press in. I usually try to hit wherever has the most space as soon as possible. You know what I mean? Like get that, get that in. Okay, so for this, I would hit, you know, here and here and then here and then rock back and forth. But if you hit here first and then the sides, it, you know, it, it's not going to really make or break it. You just want to start bringing in that extra space. So Alexis has this all tight. We really don't have any wiggle anymore. So the only thing we're doing now to the top of the bezel is really more sort of cosmetic. We're going to like smooth things out a little bit. So... Since I can't really get into that peak with the bezel roller, I'm using my straight setter, which is what we use for getting into little spaces. Um, and I'm gonna do that thing, like the two-handed technique that I've showed you guys before, where I lay the tool on my pinky with it sort of in the middle of my pinky like that. And I'm just gonna very lightly tap. This is a moonstone. You know, this is not an occasion for going berserker. So we're just gonna do a little bit lightly just to help smooth the top out. Like so. Mm -hmm. I can't really get in there with my pinky because this is in the way, but that's all right. We'll just modify, modify what I'm doing with my hands there a little bit. Now, next time we should set this up in the vise because it'll hold still a little bit better. But I'm gonna adjust this and this. This little stinker is moving around a little too much. Maybe take the paper towel out because I think there's some sticky on the bottom of that block that was bothering me but might be helping you. <laughs> now, this is, this is what I do when things won't behave. You can take your thumb off mm -hmm. and do this. Wow. This, I'm not going to lie to you, though. This is pro mode. Yeah. Okay? So. So you have your forefinger in the front. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Because you see how you can hear, mm -hmm. then, then, I've, then I've got it. But if you were in a vice, you wouldn't really have to do this as much because it wouldn't move. But you see what I mean? Mm-hmm. But like I said, this is uh, not so easy. Yeah. Okay. But you can just work your way around because as soon as you can get a little more space in there, you can move over to bigger tool if you want. Mm -hmm. But yes, this is what I do when things are naughty.
You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Slide it along. And you see how that just like smooths that out and makes it all pretty. But that's an advanced move. That's not super easy to pull off. So I don't recommend you do that right away. Okay? Mm -hmm. So go ahead and work on it. So it's all set and beautiful. Basically now, like nothing's wiggling. We don't have any space. This is the time where either we would use a Swifty one step to polish up the edge, or I think we're gonna go ahead and use a burnisher. So I'm using the tungsten because it has that little rounded end and we're gonna use that to kind of get right next to the stone. Um, and that's what's different about having a burnisher that actually fits in your hand, that you can put it in the palm of your hand and you put your just a forefinger right on top. And to me, that way I have a lot of control and I'm not worried about uh, impaling my other hand, which is um, what I never liked about those big long burnishers. Okay. I like to work toward myself because I know I'm not gonna hurt myself. <laughs> Like as you're moving away from, this is what happens. I mean, not as much with a small one, but you know, you're sliding along, your other hand is over here. If you slip, you know, yikes. So I like to do, just like I do with most of my polishing, the peel a carrot motion. I start at the top of a section and stroke it, start at the top again, stroke it until that section's done and then just move on. Um, I find, you know, I use this with polishing wheels. And you see then how, how beautiful and shiny that edge is? Burnishing is nice also when you really just want a thin, bright edge. You know what I mean? Because it'll hit the tiniest little spot and give you just a bright line. Because I feel like in a way, you know, like which is the best shine? Like, I don't know. You know what I mean? <laughs> it, it, it all looks good. This, the tiny differences are usually stuff that only is going to make a difference to you, you know, who's looking at it. Um, so I would say I'll give this back to Alexis. She can work her way around and then she can decide like, do I want to do the Swifty on it? Do I like it the way it is? You know, but that's it. One beautiful pear shaped setting.